Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of Caked. Wait, wait, I'm not actually doing that today. So I'm, I'm gonna have to change that name. But welcome to this episode of something. Today I thought we'd actually talk a little bit about how to bake the perfect cake. In my videos, I always go through a really fast thing about, oh, and then I baked a vanilla cake. I don't actually talk about how I actually made the cake. So instead of talking about cake decorating today, I'm going to go through how we actually start from scratch and bake the perfect cake and 12 things that I do, I try to do at least, I don't do it all the time, but 12 things that I try to do to ensure to bake the perfect cake. So let's get started. And I'm going to call this cake corner. No, cake corner with cues. I'm not gonna lie, I don't always make the perfect cake. I'm a very big advocate of trying new things and trying new recipes and new ways of doing things and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And over the years, I've had a lot of failures and when I first started making cakes, YouTube wasn't really a thing. So, oh my God, that makes me sound so old, but it's true and it just didn't exist so I didn't have any videos to watch and so a lot of my learning was trial and error. And so I had to fail a lot of times before I could figure out what actually worked and what didn't. But over the years of learning, a lot of things stayed consistent and I did end up learning um, a thing or two that actually makes things actually work. And now YouTube exists and it's amazing because now we can all learn from each other and it's good to learn from each other and to see what other people do because not everyone does things the same. And what works for me may not actually work for you and vice versa. So I like to see what other people do. Some things will work and some things won't. And so I'm going to show you what I know and it, hopefully it works for you. And if not, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or concerns or if you do things a different way that works for you and maybe I can learn from you. And let me just preface this by saying that every single one of these points I have done wrong at some point in my life and some of these points I do wrong on a daily basis or I forget to do on a daily basis because I just have a really bad memory and forget to do something sometimes. So don't feel bad if you don't do it. These are just ideal situations. Number one, use good ingredients. Whatever ingredients you guys use is ultimately what your cake is going to taste like. So make sure you use good quality things. And this is true for even things that you're not technically baking. Things like ganache. Ganache is literally heavy cream and chocolate. So whichever chocolate you're gonna use is what your ganache is gonna actually taste like. So if you want good quality ganache, use like Ghirardelli or Lint or something that tastes really good. If you use something that's no name or just whatever cheap chocolate, it won't taste very good and that will reflect in your overall cake. But good ingredients also cost a lot of money. So you wanna find something that's in between so it's cost effective and still tastes good. Number two, be organized and be prepared. Write down a list of everything that you're gonna need for your cake and make sure that you have it before you begin. Write down all the amounts of everything, measure it out and make sure that you have enough stuff so that you only need to make one trip to the grocery store. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've had to drop everything and go to the grocery store or send my poor husband to the grocery store because I forgot to do something. I'm always running out of sugar or butter or something. It's not a very good thing, especially if you've already put something in the oven and you're on round two and you can't leave anymore because your oven's on. So be very careful and measure everything out before you begin. It's the worst feeling if you don't. Number three. You want to make sure that all of your ingredients, especially your dairy ingredients, are at room temperature before you begin. This is for the most part, unless your recipe says that they need cold butter, usually it means room temperature butter. And you'll notice if your finger can go through the butter really easily without pushing down too much. You wanna take your butter out the night before, or at least a couple hours before. This is one of those things that I always forget to do or I don't take out enough and then I'm in trouble. You can actually put it into the microwave for a couple seconds at a time, but you do not want to overdo it because if you melt your butter, there's no real turning back. For eggs, you can also warm it up in some warm water, but don't overdo that either. You don't want to end up boiling your eggs or cooking it for some reason. And for milk, you want to take it out about an hour before too. Room temperature ingredients are very important. This item is really important because the overarching thing about baking is that you need to have patience. Baking is a science and you can't really skip a lot of things with science. 
You can't really make things go faster as much as you wish you could. You can't really skip cookie dough chilling times or the amount of times it takes for your crumb coat to chill or the amount of time that it takes your butter to come to room temperature. It's just the way it is. You need things to be done a certain way if you want your cake tasting perfect as you'd hoped. I could go into this in more detail in another video, but from what I know, room temperature ingredients create an emulsion which traps air. So when it goes into the oven, that trapped air expands and creates a fluffy baked good. Cold ingredients just don't mix the same and it doesn't create that same fluffy goodness that you'd hoped for. So long story short, take out your butter, milk and eggs early enough so that you have room temperature ingredients. Note to self. Number four, measurements actually matter. Baking is a science, so you wanna treat your baking like you would in chemistry class. When you use a measuring cup, get down and actually look at the measurements at eye level so that you know that it's actually the correct measurement. If you have a cup of flour and you have a little mountain on top, shave that off with a straight edge so that you have the correct amount in your cup. You don't wanna just use the mountain and you don't wanna pat it down, just shave off the top. If your recipe calls for eggs, that usually means large eggs and not small eggs. Your best bet is to actually use a little weighing scale that will tell you the exact grams of things so that you don't have to guess at things. Baking and cooking are very different. Cooking, you can very easily improvise, taste it as you go. Baking, once it goes in the oven, there's not really much you can do to change things. So you wanna make sure that your measurements are correct from the get-go. Number five, make sure you sift your flour with a sifter before making your cake. This is very important if you want fluffy, airy cakes. This also goes for icing sugar when you're making icing. Number six, you don't have to do this one, but I would say invest in a stand mixer or a hand electric mixer at least because it will save your hand and yourself a lot of stress. Number seven, line the bottom of your pan with parchment paper. I usually use the pan and trace out a circle and cut out that circle and put it at the bottom of my pan. And then for the sides, I use either butter or flour or the baking spray to coat the sides so that when your cake comes out, it doesn't get stuck to the pan. I cannot tell you the amount of times that my cake got stuck to the bottom. It was the worst feeling in the world when you're finally ready to decorate your cake and your cake came out all wonky because it was stuck to the pan. It's really, really not a good feeling, but if you fill it in with parchment paper, you will never have that issue. So please line your pans with parchment paper. <laughs> Number eight, don't put your cake into the oven until it's preheated exactly to the right degree, usually at 350 degrees Celsius. If your cake is in the oven too early, it will not bake evenly. And if it's too high, it won't bake evenly either. I would say wait five to 10 minutes longer because ovens are really finicky and you wanna make sure that it's actually at the correct degree before putting it in. If you can, get yourself an oven thermometer to make sure that what your oven says the degrees are is actually what the degree is so that you don't have any inconsistencies. Also, make sure that you put your cake in the middle rack so that you have it baked evenly and the less amount of cakes that you have in the oven at a time, the more even your cake will bake because it won't have to spread its heat over multiple cakes. Number nine, don't open your oven over and over again to check if your cake is actually done. This is one of my biggest problems. I'm always afraid I'm going to over bake so I keep opening the oven, but that's the worst thing you could do because then the distribution of heat gets completely skewed and it won't actually bake your cake properly. So just turn on the oven light and watch it from there and don't open your oven until you really think the cake is actually done. And your cake will be done when you put in a skewer or a toothpick and it comes out clean, then you can take it out. If it still has some liquid on it, put it back in as fast as you can so that a lot of heat doesn't escape. This is really one of my biggest problems with making cakes. I really just have to force myself not to open that oven. Number 10, let your cakes cool completely before taking it out of the pans. Run a knife around the pan, take it out, and once it's ready, you can actually wrap your cake in saran wrap and put it into the freezer for overnight so that it's a lot easier to carve and cut and level the next day. Number 11, level your cakes. I know this sounds pretty obvious now when you look at all the cake videos going around YouTube now, but when I was younger, all of my cakes had little mountains because I didn't know that leveling a cake was even a thing. I thought that I was doing something wrong with my baking because it always had a little mountain on top. And I just left it because I assumed that it'd be a waste of cake if I took it off. Thankfully, now I know better and I don't do that anymore. If you want to level cakes the way that I do, 
And I have a video and you can click on the little eye above to see how I do that. And last but not least, number 12. Simple syrup. You don't actually need simple syrup if you are going to be making your cake and eating it right away. But simple syrup is just one part water, one part sugar, boiled and cooled down completely. And then you shower these over your cakes if you think that you're going to take a bit of time to actually decorate your cake or it's going to be served a couple of days later and you want to try to preserve it. It just keeps your cake moist for longer and it really does help your cake from drying out. So it's really great. It's also really great if you want to add flavorings. You can add whatever flavorings you want to it and infuse that into your cake also. And that's all I got. Those are my 12 things to help you bake the perfect cake. They really help me. But remember what works for me may not work for you, but I would say give these things a shot and it might help you make the perfect cake. If you have any more suggestions on how to make the perfect cake and what really works for you, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I'm always up for learning new things. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Caked Corner. Is that weird? I don't know. If you can come up with a better name, let me know in the comments below. And I know this video is a little bit different than my normal videos, but if you like this video and you actually learned something from it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions or if you want me to make more videos like this, please let me know what you'd like to learn in the comments below. Please, please subscribe to this channel by clicking on my floating face right over here. And don't forget to watch my last week's video right over here. Thanks for watching guys and see you next time. Bye.